started this group up with a few football friends. Um, started as a Facebook group. We've got 30,000 people in there now. Um, and as you can see today, everyone's come together from different clubs to, um, to show they're united against extremism. And look, you can just see from the number of people and, and how peaceful um, and united it is that people uh, want change. Yeah, so um, why are you here today, sir? Marching against terrorism, all, all terrorism. Uh, we're against the people that run the Muslims over, we're against the people that plant bombs, we're against the people that run innocent people down walking over bridges. All the football lads have come here today, they've teamed up together, we've got said that no way is there any racism, any violence unless we're attacked and we're all going to make this work. This and um, yeah, I, I did a little bit of research. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't even get uh, entry into the Facebook group. I mean, apparently there's a secret Facebook group with like thirty thousand people. Yeah, it's thirty thousand people in two weeks. It's um, Football Layers Alliance. I think it's mainly all football supporters get invited in, and what they've really uh, reiterated is that there mustn't be. Uh, racism or violence unless there's people violent against us. But you guys, you're football fans, you're not... Yeah. Is, is it irritating that there's an assumption that immediately yeah. a football fan right wing, yeah. want to fight and That's right. Thing. And so, let me get this straight, you, you've got obviously um, football fans from all different clubs. Here. Yeah. And there's, there's, um, we've invited... I was in the pub where we met, there was five or six black fellas in there, we've invited the Sikhs, so I hope they turn up. Yeah, I, I, I um, actually found out through the Sikh Awareness Society. Oh really? I didn't know about this yeah. until three or four days ago. Yeah. And I saw it on Twitter. Hopefully, there's some coming down from the north, Portsmouth for bringing up some boys. Um, there won't be any violence whatsoever unless people attack us. If people attack us, then they'll come unstuck. But oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's the biggest problem. They, they always start it. Yeah. And the biggest problem is if they do start it, these boys will end it. Yeah, and then it will be turned on us. Yeah. But hopefully, it won't come to that. Well, I don't think it will, and I, I was talking to the police earlier, and I think they understand that they've got... If it, they've just got to make sure that the, uh, um, whoever wants to protest you... I reckon you probably see about 200 people or something like that. Yeah. They've got to make sure that they don't start anything. There could be a turnout, hopefully. Um, I was with the Spurs boys, and we're seven or 800. Multiply that by... You know, how many are coming? 800 Spurs people yeah. alone on their yeah. own. Wow. It could be yeah. 10,000. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, was, we'll wait and see. But. It, it's funny because um, a, a, lot, a lot of the channels that I listen to um, in terms of like politics or debate, they say that um, one of the main reasons, or one of the main weaknesses uh, within the UK is the fact that we've no longer got a, a religion to follow. Yeah. So there, there's nothing kind of joining together. But obviously football, does. Well, all my mates have been texting me and Facebooking me. They've said this is for our kids. You know, we've all got to be together. We live in one country. Uh, we've got to make sure that it'd be nice if some Muslims turn up and said we're with you as well. Um, they probably won't because they might feel a bit intimidated. But they don't need to be because we'd love it if they was here. We'll see how it goes. It's, it's unfortunate, isn't it? I mean, you, you just you, you almost want there to be more of a more of a presence. I mean, say 
if, if, you, if you had a son who was going around killing people, you'd go out on TV and you'd say, I, can, I don't like this of course you would. everything he's doing. And, you know, I'm, I'm a human being. <coughs> yeah. I don't want anyone killing anybody. I just want our, all our families to have a good time. Good life. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. Everyone just kind of... Anyway, mate. It's nice to meet you, mate. Yeah, thank you. Uh, if, if you just search this event on YouTube, <laughs> I'll probably yeah, it'll be about four hours long. Yeah, but I'll find the... Um... Go on YouTube and type uh, Football Lads and Lions. Oh, what? This will be, this will be the main one. I've done the start. Oh, yes. What a feeling. Let's have it right. As I did at the uh, UK against Hate March, I'm not going to bother trying to get audio of the uh, the talks because there, there will be kind of proper recordings of that. Um, there's no point in trying to get the audio of these speeches themselves, uh, but because they're um, because someone's recording up close, it's, uh, it's obviously you you want you want the uh, the footage on the ground as you're here. It might go a minute.
Society. Meaning, oh God, may I never shrink from a righteous deed. And what better righteous than, than this, standing here, shoulder to shoulder, all of us, one nation, one people, against terrorism. Also standing in solidarity for those who have lost their lives and those who are recovering from the horrific injuries after the attacks. Let me say this, I condemn all forms of terrorism and I make no distinction. Westminster Bridge, Manchester, London Bridge, Borough Market, and the recent one in Finsbury Park. I condemn them all. You know, it's time for the UK to wake up and understand the enemy. It's time to cut out the BS and call it what it is. Now tackling this, it won't be easy, but ignoring the problem isn't going to solve it either. So that as a matter of urgency, we need to start having a grown-up and frank debate about what we are going to do as a nation together. And for me, the biggest stumbling block is political correctness. It's the biggest cause that is blocking our path to the root cause of the problem. Now this term, political correctness, PC, for me, it means political cowardism. We're too frightened now. We get too scared to call a spade a spade. We need to call it what it is. So UK and we are losing this battle because of political correctness. 
Okay, guys, answer me this. If we can't identify the enemy, and in fact refuse to do so, haven't we already lost? So we can't afford to do that. Our unity in this fight must cross our religious divides and our diverse identities. The best thing any Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Sikh can do to combat this religious extremism is to call it what it is and when it happens. Religion can I, can I get a... is both the cause and the solution to this problem. But we'll never solve it if we don't call it what it is. It's religious extremism. And in this case, in the last three months, it's radical Islamic terrorism. Yeah. Let me say that once more. Radical Islamic terrorism. Now I've been studying the iceberg model of political extremism. Murderous and violent attacks extremists carry out is a visible tip of the iceberg. So whatever we've seen in the last three months, it's only the tip of the iceberg. The rest of this iceberg is underwater and out of sight. And that's where we've got to go down and root these people out. Yeah. Government needs to establish a blacklist of foreign and homegrown imams and other political leaders who spew hate and intolerance and calling for the death and destruction of our multicultural and multi-faith society. So religious and political speeches that threaten morality and public order, they should be banned. Places where these speeches are made, whether online or in the real world, these places should be closed down ASP. And that is what we should be demanding of our political elite. Starting Monday, we should be knocking on our politicians' doors and asking for that. Government talks about radicalization and the doctrine of hate and hate preaching. But they've done nothing to stop it. You've seen hate preachers walk the streets in every city spewing hate and nobody's touched them. Enough is enough. Things need to change now. Not tomorrow, not the day after, now. Britain, we've been too tolerant on extremism and it ain't, it ain't gonna happen anymore. So when Theresa May says enough is enough, Hold her to her words, because words are cheap. Action speaks louder than words. Political correctness is going to be the death of us. It's been the death of far too many people. People young as Saf Safi, who was eight years old when she's been mowed down. So this situation truly needs 
great leadership. And leadership is not going to be found in Whitehall. It's going to be found in the common man. There is a saying, evil prevails when good men don't do anything. We can blame the politicians, but from today, if we don't do anything, we have to blame ourselves. I'm going to end from a quote from my guru. It says, Kya tu soya? Jag Iyanna, meaning, oh foolish people, why are you asleep? Why don't you wake up and smell the coffee? Georgia ke, se upre, sutte gya mohai. Those that remain awake and aware are saved, and those that sleep walk through life, that's when we get looted. So wake up. Be prepared and stay safe. Thank you very much.
and the helicopter is far first. made a clear point that we didn't want it to be related to England, United Kingdom, we wanted to make it clear that it's about football fans coming together. We didn't want to focus on the country, we wanted to focus on the brilliant skill of football fans to make to make the point, to, to make a point and bring, bring, bring it to the government and, and hopefully this will make a point.